House. Got a patient. <sighs> Sorry. Can't play anymore. My mom's calling me. You just admitted a world-class cyclist. You gotta fire Stacy. Yeah, I'll get right on that. Jeff Forster. Respiratory arrest at 30 miles per hour. She's loading me up with pointless paperwork. You're way behind on your pointless paperwork. O2 sats are in She's the hostile. You know me, hostility makes me shrink up like a... Can't think of a non-sexual metaphor. She's gonna stand over my desk with a ruler, checking my spelling. ER check for lung infiltrates, nothing there. Professional athletes, Cuddy. It's like watching an old movie at 2 a.m., reliving all the classic moments. The part where he denies it's drugs. The part where the good guys ride in, test the blazing, prove that it is drugs. Oscar clip. He can't imagine how they got into his body. It's so familiar, so comforting. She can't handle working with me. Oh, right. Yeah, she's still got a thing for you and making it impossible for her to deal. Makes perfect sense, except for the pronouns. Anyway, thanks for getting me out of that meeting. He's not denying the drugs. I'm thinking he's actually sick. Jeff Forster, this is uh, Dr. Doctor, you're a sick person. And you are a loved one. Actually, manager, we've been together for seven years. So what's the drug du jour on the bike circuit these days? Still erythropoietin, or are you guys just chugging battery acid? There's no way I'd touch Epo. <laughs> Too many guys stroking out and dying. Damn! Ten bucks for the ticket, six for the popcorn. I do straight blood doping. Plot twist. That's a very daring confession. We've got confidentiality, right? Assuming I'm more ethical than your client. So injecting yourself with donor red blood cells for fun and profit. Any other tricks up your sleeve? Well, nothing much recently. I'm in town for a charity ride, so it didn't matter if I won. The kids just needed to see me. If you go slower, they see you longer. Let's say that our health could be affected by things we did before last Friday. Well, um, I usually sleep in a hyperbaric chamber. I've been pumping up electrolytes with an IV drip, anabolic herbal supplements, amphetamines, and diuretics. Yeah, 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 yeah. But why would you be sick? I know that doping has risks. I know that it's outside the rules. But I do what I have to to kick ass at my job. Don't you? Dr. House is a firm believer in good old-fashioned hard work. This guy doesn't even get sick like a regular person. Instead of a list of symptoms and no cause, we have a list of possible causes for one symptom. Is the symptom death? Respiratory distress. And insanity doesn't cause it. I looked it up. It's the doping. Injecting extra red cells boosts your endurance level, but it also thickens your blood. Thick blood equals clots equals respiratory distress. Not with a clean spiral chest CT. Guys sleeping in a hyperbaric chamber over oxygenation can cause cell damage, and if the cells in the lungs are damaged... Gotta cause pulmonary edema, which he doesn't have. Supplements he's been taking contain your himbo, which can cause nerve paralysis. Tox screen was normal. All the tests were normal. There's no clot, no edema. And yet he still can't breathe, so there's something in here that we can't see. Ugh. Air. Come to Papa. This guy's been injecting himself how many times a day? All it takes is one slip of the needle to cause an air embolus. So air is keeping him from breathing air. Let's go with that for the irony. Get a VQ scan and check his veins for bubbles. You were right. Now there with three wasted words. There is a bubble in his lung. We should do a Swan Gans catheterization. I love when you do both sides of the conversation. It's like white noise. It's very peaceful. Every time an athlete goes down, you guys assume it's drugs. Look, the doctors say it's probably acid reflux. Yeah, look, call me tomorrow. There's a good chance he'll be released. Okay, bye-bye. So is this fixing him? If his acid reflux isn't worse than we thought, yeah. I gotta be in Spain in four days. Shouldn't be a problem. Great. If I can just find the little bugger, should be able to suck it out. Thanks for a week. You're under mild sedation for the test. I'm aware of. There it is. Ah, got it. Oof. 
fantastic. I'll pack his things. Not yet. I want to monitor him for a couple of hours, make sure he's OK. Give him time to sign a picture for me, maybe even a jersey. To Dr. Chase, I owe you everything. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be that personal. Uh, and too many eBay shoppers named Dr. Chase, huh? <laughs> Still trying to unload the Barbara Walters spit cup. Here you go. Seriously, anything's fine. Jeff? You all right? Jeff, can you swallow? What makes a guy start drooling? Chase, were you wearing your short shorts? Muscle fatigue in his neck and jaw. He's obviously got something worse than an air embolus. Why? Because you don't drool from your lungs? Maybe the problem is not the embolus itself. Maybe it's the treatment. Maybe you hit a nerve, literally. The embolectomy was clean. His legs were tired too. Well, I thought it was from the sedation, but if not, it means he's got something systemic. Which means it would have nothing to do with the stunts he's been pulling. Lupus or polymyositis? It explains the progressive muscle weakness. It could be ALS. He's too young for that. Some type of muscular dystrophy? He's too old for that. So what would be just right, Goldilocks? Full blood workup, including ANA for lupus. And get a muscle biopsy. Find out if we're talking myopathy or neuropathy. Here's my new theory. The drooling's another competitive edge. Nobody can drive behind him. World gets slick. He's the only one not racing in the rain. He can barely move his arms or legs. Paralysis? No, just general weakness. Muscle biopsy is negative for polymyositis. And ALS. And muscular dystrophy. ANA for lupus, also negative. Maybe his bike shorts are just on too tight. So, by your rationale, how shouldn't use a cane? He should just drag his bum leg around as God intended. House has a handicap. All he's aiming for is normality. And who decides what's normal? What if we find a drug that makes people live 20 years longer? Should we ban that because it's not normal? Jeff doesn't want normal. He wants superpowers. So why is he normal? Oh, God. You two? He's shooting for extraordinary. So why is everything so ordinary? I mean, this guy's breathing, drinking, and ejecting himself with everything he can find to amp up his body chemistry, and yet every test is normal. He's artificially raising his red blood count, so why isn't it raised? Maybe his count is raised. Maybe what's normal for us is out of whack for him. <sighs> Can't slip anything by you. Well, if that's true, his white cells are up too, which would point to some kind of infection. Muscle weakness, exhaustion. You could have encephalitis. It's kind of a long shot. Yeah. But it's been over an hour since we poked the patient with something sharp, so get a lumbar puncher and order broad-spectrum antibiotics. My arm's still funny. <clears throat> <clears throat> the sats are dropping. He's in respiratory arrest. Can't be. We fixed that. Apparently not. So glad we cured his respiratory arrest. Freed him up to develop respiratory arrest. LP was negative for encephalitis. The white count's still the same, but the red count's fallen to 29%. What was my theory yesterday? That I screwed up the embolectomy. We'll get a chest x-ray to check. I didn't screw up. Why would you be so petty, Chase? He's down a court. Either he's losing blood because you nicked something, or he's just not producing blood, in which case we're talking acute anemia combined with a muscular disorder. Paraneoplastic syndrome? Either you screwed up, or he's got cancer. Well, he's negative for bleeds. Congratulations, Chase. It's cancer. Clean him up and let oncology have him. It's their party now. He doesn't have cancer. Biopsy shows he's got pure red cell aplasia. There's no way PRCA can manifest so suddenly. Unless it's drug-induced. He's lying about not being on EPO. Why would he lie? What does it matter? People lie for thousands of reasons. But there's always a reason. Philosophically interesting, medically irrelevant. He passed out, had to be resuscitated, and he still can't move his legs. It's not possible. The drugs should be flushing out of his system. Can't leave if they don't exist. The EPO use explains every one of his symptoms. He's been lying and cheating, and now it's coming back to bite him. The only problem with that theory is it's based on the assumption that the universe is a just place. If it were, then his poor manager wouldn't have been fired for no reason. Lambert Eaton. His chest was clear. So we run an electromyography test. You're still not explaining the PRCA. What's his red count now? I had to give him a blood transfusion. He's back around 30. He needed a transfusion? Well, he was losing blood, so I thought maybe he needed blood. 
go forth and scan his neck. His neck? Or repeat everything I say in question form. You found a thymoma. How'd you know to look in his neck? Thymoma's usually present in the chest. I know it wasn't in his chest. All we've done since he checked in is look at his chest. Well, all the more reason not to think. There are two types of PRCA. Acute comes on suddenly, chronic takes its time. We all thought Jeff's was acute because it happened right in front of us. What if it had been there for months, maybe years? There's no way. It would have kept him from racing. With that kind of anemia, he would have needed constant... Blood transfusions. Which he was getting in convenient blood doping form. He was treating himself without even knowing it. Up to half of patients with chronic PRCA have a thymoma. And up to half of patients with a thymoma... I've always wanted to do this.